Welcome to the April 23rd Jail and Zones production user call. We have Glenn, Jan, Antrenig, Mohammed, David, Tigran, Karen, Dave, and myself, Michael. And I have some news. Uh, the Open ZFS folks have concluded we will do a traditional de developer summit Monday, Tuesday, but also a Saturday, Sunday user event. Its name may change, but the draft idea is a production user summit in Portland, Oregon on October 26th through 29th. I see a typo there. Let me fix that. Uh, you are all welcome to help organize, help fundraise, and participate. There, I said it. Uh, let's see. Entrenig on NetGraph. Hopefully, Daniel can roll in who has some insights on that. Jan, can you tell us about idempotentjail.conf ideas? So uh, in FreeBSD 14, we can now uh, reuse part of jail.conf via um, includes with globbing to uh, include multiple files from one include statement, which is a way to reuse code, um, which makes it feasible to have a global jail configuration for all your jails instead of one jail.conf per jail um, with common code snippets in between them included from different places. So, um, that makes it, in my opinion, useful uh, to use jail.conf to basically provision the jails instead of having to call out to external tools. For example, with package base, it's just place the certificate there to validate the repository, place the repository configuration, and then point the package manager at the jail root, and a minute later, you have a full user land. Um, but you don't want to spend a full minute doing that every time, and it's quite a bit of churn if you were to force it. So instead, you need some kind of code which follows the usual pattern in, uh, in more or less reliable shell scripts of test if my uh, target condition is reached, if not, do this, so that you have this check precondition, perform maybe check post condition uh, kind of stuff. Um, and doing all of that in shell uh, without um, factoring out this repetitive pattern is annoying, uh, which is why I wanted to ask if anyone knows a good low overhead um, way to do that. Uh, I looked into writing it myself, and it's totally possible. It's just uh, yeah, that I haven't uh, done it already. And uh, maybe there's a better way to do it. And the other part is we have a way to dump the configuration of a jail, but not really a jail, but just dump the whole jail.conf back in a slightly mangled syntax. And it would be nice if we had a way to just select a jail and get an easily machine readable uh, representation. For some, some tools, it would be better if it was the jail.conf syntax for others. Uh, Things like uh, JSON or YAML would be better. Um, so it would be useful if we could basically pick which we wanted. And it wouldn't be hard with uh, libxo to just dump what is in the uh, jail command's memory as JSON. So that we have basically a mode where the jail command only reads the configuration and then dumps the uh, Verbal and parameter assignments and the scripts for a jail. I would prefer to just do it with libxo. Uh, the current one uh, to get the configuration dump is, I think, E. Let me check the main page. And um, yeah, def. Okay, uh, jail dash e and then a separator. Okay. Ends it out as a jail.conf, but you get the full configuration of all jails concatenated. Oh, so of all jails. That's, Can yeah, you specify that's a jail and, or jail ID no. to get only one? No, you can't. Interesting. 
Okay. You can only dump it all. Uh, I assume before 14, it was so common that you had uh, multiple jail.cons, hmm. uh, which were independent of each other, where it, you could just point it at the right configuration file to dump. But now, yeah, it's not fun. Okay. So did I hear that you're asking for feedback or what? Do you have something to test? Do you just have ideas um, on a napkin I've, or what? I have a bit of uh, experimental code to play with. Ah, something shareable or still internal? Uh, unfinished. Okay. Mostly. Well, then keep us posted. And I suppose if anyone wants to burn their fingers with early code, reach out to Jan. And I'm sure. So it's basically the idea that, that. Uh, you have a command which takes the uh, arguments to invoke multiple commands in succession. Uh, and you separate the different command line uh, argument lists with empty arguments, because that's the only value which is available as a separator. So you, it would look something like this. Um, Mm -hmm. And you have permission to drop it right in the doc. Yeah, I'm going to. Okay, cool. Excellent. So, um, yeah, uh, just let us know how we can help, be it reach out or if you have questions for Jan. I, I actually, I, I have one bit yes, here I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about. Please. Um, and I would suggest keeping it all JSON only. Um, I know that YAML is you know quite popular for for configuration files but uh, experience um, have taught me that that yaml is a, a mess. basically a royal royal pain to 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 correctly parse that and any yaml parser also accepts json as a subset mm -hmm. yes so the idea uh, would the command would look something like this, um, if I can. And did I hear UCL in the mix there? There we go. UCL would uh, also accept <laughs> JSON. Oh, the, oh, there like you go. The, uh, least common denominator. And right now, um, UCL isn't involved in that idea. It's just that sometimes you modify, delete, whatever, a jail conf, and it would be nice to be able to look up um, what the jail used to uh, be configured as <laughs> when you created it. And we can have like 95% of the code there. It's just missing a little bit to make it useful. Any questions for Jan? Uncle Dave, do you have any updates on your CICD CCC thing? Also known as Die Jenkins Die. You are muted if you're talking. If not, you might be away. I can't see a screen. Maybe he's actually paying attention to the road. Was he on the road? I missed that. Okay. Looked like it. Ah. Mohammed, no, any I'm questions like this? There, there he is. You're Go hiding ahead. in my pocket at the moment. I'm in the cellar. <laughs> You're in the cellar. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, I am, yeah. Um, so no, no updates. There'll be, there'll be news when there's news. Don't worry, I'll let you know. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. No pressure, no pressure. Mohammed, news, questions, ideas? Uh, not from my side, sir. Still no. fly off. Still fly in the wall. Yeah. Don't get smacked. Uh, <clears throat> hope not. I have unprivileged user make a fast type T Z a fast news, but that is not quite appropriate for this call. Although I realize the package based jail syntax could be super useful for creating a VM. So I will try to make that work. I'm excited about that. 
So, uh, Glenn, you had some feedback, and it looks like you're enjoying the USA. Any ideas, questions, observations, concerns, funny jokes? That's a um, little... not, not, not really from my side here. Um, other than... Uh... You know, just within days of landing, you see the first, you know, the whole Florida man situation. <laughs> yeah, as the tourism board calls it, that's their slogan. Welcome to Florida, WTF. Uh, let's see. That's a welcome, Levon. So we have uh, new attendees. David, Karen, Lavon, Tigran, do any of you want to ask questions, introduce yourselves? Tell us about where you're hanging out at this moment. And are you all here thanks to Antrenig, who left you hanging, bailed on us? Come on back, Antrenig. No, I'm good. Everything was understandable. Thank you. Are you studying or working with Antronig? Yeah, Antronig is our lecturer. Cool. Uh, we're learning with him free BSD, cybersecurity, etc. They're interesting classes. Great. That is good to hear. And Jan, do you want to tell us about the syntax you dropped in with lots of dashes? It's just a bit of ASCII art. I'm framing the output in. Okay. And if there's a, something like an error, it looks like this. Um, and if you have a uh, terminal type, it's all the error is also marked in red. Oh, okay. Well, you are welcome to jazz it up in the dock with red and other. Things yep. and and formatting as you go. But that's just um, yep. Cool. Okay. Uh, I've been pinging Antrenig for his netgraph questions. Does anyone happen to know from as his team and students? Do you know what he was going to ask about? Uh, he's still in the. No, he's just dropped off. Okay. Vanished. So there's that. What else? Um, is Karen also part of your team? Okay. I see a Karen in the list. Just curious. Okay, we've lost Antrenig. Maybe he got uh, too um, too bold with his net graph network <laughs> setup and kicked <laughs> himself out. <laughs> that could be. That could easily be. Yes, we all tend to dog food like in production. Yeah, until our family gets upset. Well, let's give him another minute more. Um, let's see. Boom, you've got more syntax. Okay, keep it coming. And you're welcome to oh, drop it straight in the dock. You have my full permission. I'll yeah, format it. It's just as uh, very unfair right now. So I didn't think okay. it's worth it because Fine. all of it will change. But basically, what It'll it does change, is okay. right now it it records the exit state of each command. And the idea is that on the first failure, it uh, aborts, and the highest few exit codes have special meanings, like this is an intended change or skip the next task. Right. Okay. Cool. Uh, so it's, yeah, and it just helps to, uh, right now, basically it's a very stripped down uh, special shell, which only supports this one pattern and therefore um, provides good transparency to other scripting languages to put the rest in. Okay, very cool. And that's the idea at least, and that it's fast enough to go into your jail.com for every startup so that... Basically, ah. the jail self uh, provisions on every boot of the jail uh, without uh, driving up the startup time noticeably. Ooh. 
let's see. I have something terrible I'll drop in the chat. So in parallel to all of this are a lot of networking discussions. So with a colleague, I banged out the network switch buyer's guide because somehow this is no longer a solved problem. There was a time you could just run out and buy a gigabit switch and plug it in and have a nice day. But now we're having this bizarre, oh, melancholy moment that, wow, if all the switches out from, from every vendor have nearly the same ASIC chips in the middle of them, they're all white box switches. But no, we don't have meaningful white box switches. We just install Linux or FreeBSD on and just build it, boot it, have a nice day, move some packets. So you're welcome to peruse that. If you know anything about Aruba, fill out that section because no one within reach knew much about them. And apparently HP has bought several other companies and has done stuff with them. So uh, facts, welcome. The network switch. And this is a very cynical guide. We are very disappointed. We are frustrated. We are thinking, oh, here's a great solution. And then, oh, firmware updates are behind a paywall. Oh, other nonsense. So if you have some tales of woe to put in there, please do. The old switcheroo. The old switcheroo. I like that. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you're um, feeling experimental, uh, my critique may be quite powerful, but uh, also finicky. So there are non-finicky switches out there? Really? Do oh, tell me more. Gigabit Ethernet, of course. It's just unmanaged crap of you, <laughs> but exactly. it's useful. Only a few. I mean, if, if, if you enjoy pain and suffering, I mean, Winbox is fantastic. There you go. Uh, just SSH in and have them um, pull in the configuration. Winbox is just, uh, yeah. And they have, a, um, they even have two APIs. One of them is uh, the one you should use, uh, yes. which is basically the CLI and Winbox and uh, the API are all the same thing, just access via different protocols, which is quite nice because the backend is basically the same and there's no other than just that Winbox doesn't have a GUI for it. It's not that you are missing features over one or the others. And if you like crazy ad hoc scripting languages, it feels like a mix of, the CLI feels like a mix of shell and well, PHP or something. Okay, cool. uh, With the right data types you need for a network operating system. But yeah. And they're made in Latvia, and they have beautiful yep. Latvian symbols on the boxes. I can show you some if you like. And they give you uh, enough rope uh, to accomplish what you need, including um, stringing yourself up. Is that not true rope. of all these technologies? Mm, you know, some of them are so restrictive that you would wish for a way to end your way. Okay, great. <laughs> okay, I've been... With... Go ahead. Uh, then does. Cool. I've been pinging on Shanig, but it sounds like he got uh, pulled away, so we will not get to talk NetGraph with him. But uh, his question seemed to be, is NetGraph Buddy the best option, or should we, I don't know, so, develop uh, some new documentation or something in between? I will only speculate. Go ahead. Um, so we have the command line tool in GCTL, which uh, you can use to configure, um, no, he just reported back that his ISP is doing upgrades. <laughs> oh, perfect. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So yeah, uh, they picked the great timing anyway. Um, so um, with NGCTL, uh, you can do basically everything, but it's uh, more or less a debugging tool more than a comfortable configuration tool. Um, but... Um, NetGraph is really an API, and you have the C library to use it. Um, and the most complicated common application using NetGraph on FreeBSD is probably uh, the multi-link PPP daemon. Oh, OK. Uh, MLPD5, uh, um, 
which can be used, for example, to run your own uh, ISP if you want, including all the necessary encapsulation to, yeah. What was that name? MLPD? Layer two bit stream. MLPD5, if I remember correctly. Okay. Uh, uh, multi link. Yeah, I would it, oh, quickly something like pick that. up. Uh, Nifty thrifty. MPD5, sorry. MPD5, cool, thank you. Yep, MPD. Um, it's the multi link uh, PPPD daemon for FreeBSD. The documentation looks a bit uh, stale, but it's still maintained. Um, it's just that they haven't refreshed their website in a while. So it looks like you're uh, at least a decade back, but hey, it's just pure a uh, text. So what more do you want for documentation? And um, then the other thing is with um, NetGraph that you can just sniff the uh, messages of an existing application setting it up and then uh, replay them basically or factor out your template. For oh. example, for a jail uh, setup, you could just load the right uh, NetGraph kernel module so that um, your Ethernet-like network interfaces are all visible to uh, NetGraph, then install a NetGraph bridge on top of them, and then just attach a virtual NetGraph to Ethernet interfaces for each jail so that yeah, you have a bridge jail and move the uh, ng ether interface over into the vnet enabled jail. Uh, one interesting thing you can do with netgraph which you can't do without it right now because we have a ife pair but we don't have an if pair without e pair is to um, do a layer free setup where you have a routed jail setup um Any insights to share on that graph? Dave, have you ever cranked that bad boy up? Welcome, Chris. Hey, people are trickling in. This is this will this will be a drive-by meeting all day. I love it. So question on the table is about NetGraph. If not, I'd love to know if Chris, you have any news to share. Welcome, welcome. So I I use NetGraph and um MPD5 here and have done for years. I guess ah. a decade, and it just works. Um, I don't have any super performance details for it because it's for our crappy ISP here, and it is what it is. Um, so I can't tell you if you, you know, if you lose thirty percent of your throughput by going through it or not. I don't know, uh, but functionally, um, it's it's pretty good. Yeah. What is uh, interesting for jails about NetGraph is how flexible it is and that you can write your own uh, netgraph node type so with your own type of virtual uh, network nodes uh, in user space um, just as a daemon uh, as a prototype before you can eventually move it into the kernel as a kernel module nice with a very similar api um, so there's basically a socket uh, in both directions so that you can use a socket which is on the other end uh, in the kernel a net graph node and there's a net graph node that is that wraps a socket so that you can for example do things like uh, bind and connect the udp socket and then throw ip packets at it to do uh, ip over udp as a tunnel You invented a wire guard. Mm, <laughs> minus the encryption, unless you also apply um, an IPsec policy to the um, <laughs> IPsec transport mode required policy in both directions and run a key exchange key. Then you've come scarily close, but the other question is, why would you do that when you have an IPsec BTI interface, which is easier to use? Exactly. So, Chris, any news? 
Unfortunately, no. I've been out traveling the last Aww. few days. Um, nice, greetings nice. from Prague. Oh, hello. <laughs> so, I hope you enjoy beer. <laughs> yes. Excellent. Good city for that. It is a very good city. Well, gang, uh, Entrenix having network trouble. Hopefully, uh, these tea leaves on NetGraph will help him, and I've been relaying some of this to him, and Dave, he may reach out to you with specific questions. Uh, anything else, or shall we call it good and talk ZFS tomorrow? I actually Just, have a quick question. Yes, please. Let her rip. So, um, I... Given that there are multiple jail management tools, you know, like Bastille, BSD, and IOK, etc., uh, what tool is actually of, of, of all the selections? What is actually considered the most well developed and most maintained, uh, in in your opinion? Um, jail. That that would be what I would say too. So the the general pen that everyone goes through, and I think. On this call, there's at least three people who have done this themselves. As you go, oh, um, I want something a little bit different to what the standard tools provide. I will write my own. And you go, actually, this is pretty cool. I will now release this to, to the world. And many, many people will use it. And I will become famous and maybe even rich um, in the BSD community. And then after a couple of years of doing that, you get a lot of pull requests and your enthusiasm wanes and you stop doing it if you're foolish you do then do a new jail tool because this time you're going to do it better but the 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 crux i, I think where this meeting started off originally was people going we need to stop doing the one-man band and start doing the let's improve the things we have um collectively and that way you don't end up in a position of like for example me with having deployed io cell a decade ago and finally getting rid of the rest of it in my system now um five six seven years after 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 it's been deprecated um and in between that time its replacement io cage has been and gone there was a go version of there's mm -hmm. a python version of it and those have all gone and easy um, jail before it all the base tools still remain and continue getting improved uh, um no one is existing easy jail deployment <laughs> Confessions of the many, yeah, maybe, maybe. And what else is there? QJail, um, yeah. I think about a year ago, I went through this sort of um, the eye of the needle going, um, I mean, maybe it was two years ago, with a, with a customer project going, okay, what's the right thing to do here for this thing, which is going to be around for many, many years. And so what we did is we um, did some Ansible stuff to make the provisioning much, much easier. And do all the stuff that Ansible is good at, you know, turning one node of the cluster on before you do the second one um, and handing all that sort of rotation across multiple servers. But mm. fundamentally, they're leaving the jail stuff with here's a jail.conf file. You can go jail, service, start, stop. And um, keeping that separation of how do you run the jails, how do you start it, how you manage it, use the tools it's provided, how do you make your provision easier and doing smart things with ZFS? leave that to an external tool. And then if someone later comes and says, we don't like external tool, we want to use another external tool, whatever the next flavor of Terraform or Ansible um, is, then they're dealing with the provisioning aspect, not the runtime aspect. Mm. Uh, it also depends on what you want to manage. Do you want to manage individual jails on a single server? Do you have many servers that you want to manage individual jails on? Or do you in fact want to manage many jail hosts as a cluster of jails and they all have different answers yeah so so the reason but the reason of my uh, my question here initially is because uh, I've, I've been spending quite some time digging through the the code base that basically is, is, is the basis for for trueness core mm. and i'm kind of trying to understand uh, the reasoning behind why they decided to pull in IOK and and now IOK seems to be this Python pile that is not really maintained. Um, it's so, so yeah, maintained. yeah. yeah. Um, um, I think the original reason was people. The, so IOK just is, is reasonably old, maybe eight nine years roughly, maybe a little bit longer. Um, mm. And its previous incantation was ISL, which is a shell script a very well-written shell script. It got very, very long. And they said, okay, let's not 
do this anymore. Let's do this in a, in a language that has testability and functionality um, for encapsulation, so Python. And the TrueNAS world is um, people come along and want to have something a bit like Docker. They want to have a thing that says install my Plex and do all the things that are necessary for that. And so what they wanted was a way to take the ZFS template part but also add in a bunch of other attributes. Here's the packages that should be inside the jail. Here's the network mm. settings. And that's what IOCage is from a single service point of single server point of view. So I think I can't speak for the people who wrote it, but my impression was it was um, here's halfway to Docker. I stumbled across one of the people uh, who wrote uh, or rewrote it in Python uh, at uh, Chaos Communication Camp five years ago, or almost five years ago. And what came out was that um, IX systems wanted something which was easy to integrate with their existing middleware so that they could put a graphical user uh, interface around it. And his idea was more or less to turn it into uh, for, uh, the other fork of it, IOC, which is basically just a library for jail management in Python. Mm. And then it got annoying because, yeah, said, what name to pick for which part of it and who should man, uh, basically own which repository and do what and that. And then it kind of um, just died because nobody got exactly what we wanted, but they were still tied to each other. Um, yeah, that's at least my understanding uh, of FUBS. And these days it looks like Bastille BSD has a bit of uh, you know, really, uh, a community if you want <laughs> that kind of thing uh, behind it and as quite reasonable from a complexity point of view. If you are more interested in what can be done with clustering, maybe look into pot. It's not, the, it's mostly done. That's another problem with GL managers. It's a solvable problem as in, you can write a jail manager and if you don't want to do everything, at some point it's done. And when it looks dead, because it just keeps on working. And there are extension hooks for the user to put extensions in them if they want and yeah but you don't have to so where jail managers are really tempting is when you want to keep the default configuration very short so that it's easy to share in a tutorial and then bring up and yeah part is what kind of networking do you want because the problem here is that you have so many different mechanisms to pick from in FreeBSD for networking and storage that there is no, you have to do it this way. So there is only like five lines of configuration. You can do so much or so little um, that, for example, the jail.com syntax works, but it's not, yeah, it's not the um, pleasant user experience you want it to be. Hmm. So if Glenn. you do complex part, that's, it's fine to add a few IP addresses and then spin it up. But when you want to basically uh, have your jail join uh, some kind of overlay network and then be auto-risk covered here, set up DNS dynamically, uh, maybe, uh, I don't know, mount this uh, network file system here and so on, then it suddenly becomes a lot... Um, more uh, fragile and annoying to script correctly. It's mm, possible to yeah. do it all from jail.conf, but you have a few things are just so that you have to repeat yourself a lot, or even if we can now deduplicate that thanks to includes, but you still have to write the redundancy once. Mm. Okay. The question. So basically, you can do everything you can do in things like a Docker file in a jail.com file. The syntax just looks a bit different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I'm 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 familiar with with um, you know dealing with with jails.com and, and also IOCs. Uh, what's, 
most of the existing documentation I've seen over the years for jail.com only uses it to uh, start the services running inside the jail and maybe do the minimum amount of network setup, but you can do so much more, for example, to provision the ZFS data sets for the jail automatically on first start, to uh, install those jail from packages or from a tarball or whatever you need on first start again. And that's the part I mentioned in the beginning about idempotent jail.com. How do you make sure that such uh, a logic is truly idempotent and you don't, uh, I don't know, overwrite your um, MinIO S3 servers uh, objects every time you restart the jail because you recreate the persistent data data set in ZFS or something. Mm -hmm. uh, or that it's slow as molasses to start because you uh, do a package upgrade on every start uh, or it breaks every time the port maintainer does something less than perfect. And because because you, you just discovered that you're running on the bleeding edge and it's bleeding all over you and the rack and <laughs> so on. <laughs> uh, yeah. So Glenn, um, a nice, almost accidental benefit of these calls was the moment that someone thought, hey, why is it all these either jail or beehive managers go through this rinse and repeat cycle of like excitement and then failure and yeah, you name it. So fortunately we identified, especially Jan with your help, the fact that, well, um, we're lacking state tracking on both jails and say VM. So if you sit down at a system with a running jail, you might legitimately wonder how did we get here? How did this, what launched it? What's What set up the storage? Uh, how long has it been here? You name it. So Jamie was super responsive with things like first the dot include as an elegant way to save a whole lot of scaffolding that people were proposing or using or re re reinventing. And then recently the, I believe was dash C cleanup to help with that, uh, that sort of life cycle, literal cycle. And so I would love to see jail and beehive under the hood be as competent and easy to use and straightforward as possible. And everyone here has been really good about contributing towards that. And uh, Chris has a rather impressive, encouraging, say, beehive state manager because state management was one of the long time problems from day one. And people would work around them in their various ways and maybe solve one or two problems, but not the fundamental problems. And I will very briefly so soapbox and say, I don't see fundamental upstream features coming out of those projects. So I'd rather just focus on the true upstream of these technologies. And I'm so grateful for all of you for participating in that. Yes, Jan. You have made uh, there's grunt. something to jump in really quick. Uh, what yes, about, please, uh, didn't, didn't Antronic, didn't Antronic uh, create Jailer? Yeah, Isn't that also that, something that's that... one of them that yeah. and to his credit, Jailer leaves you with, I believe, a jail.conf and a completely stock. Uh, it's just an, it's a helper rather than a lifestyle style. And uh, we you at some at one extreme, you get like CBSD, which is this entire lifestyle that takes over your machine and does its thing its way with its own dedicated like console and stuff, which is perfect for some. But doesn't necessarily help the upstream. There I said it. And finally, there's also Jan's S6RC work, right? That's also going into that. Any day now, mm -hmm. Jan, I need to manage some VMs right now. Did you and Jan Antrenig come up with a strategy on how that's best done? Mm. Uh, any day now, any day now. I would call the Jada lifestyle if there's such a thing, just living off the land. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. But with a VM help. So may, Chris, I may have to dive in with your tool and I'll give it uh, a uh, Michael, why don't you just put beehive in a jail.conf and run beehive in a jail from jail.conf uh, and use that for orchestration? Conclusion. Yes, sir. And yeah, that was one of my greatest epiphanies of the last few years is because if you want to prevent, well, escapes, and we have such lovely jail infrastructure that's getting better every year. Amen. Well, 
Beehive has also for the last couple of releases been capsicum enabled. So before it runs guest instructions, it uh, locks itself into a capsicum uh, sandbox, which makes it also a less, lot less scary as an attack surface. So Jan, are you thinking with an actual process supervisor within that jail, or you just launch, he killed Beehive because, hey, there's only one instance and you can't. Um, so, uh, pew, pew, pew. <laughs> there are other ways you can do it in free, if you're up to using FreeBSD specific uh, APIs, for example, you could just have a parent process which then uses a sub uh, register itself as a sub repo and then it can just kill all of its descendants with a signal. Uh, you have so an example have of a sub repo process? Uh, proxy TL is the main page you want to read. Um, so that it's so uh, if a process doesn't have a parent process uh, and it dies, uh, normally it gets reparented to the init process, which is then responsible for collecting the zombie. Um, inside a shell, for example, if you have a pipe in a shell, tail something, grab something, uh, it um, uses process groups, but those are voluntary and um, you can escape them and stuff like this. So it's not good enough for a reliable pro service management. And the solution to that is to have sub repos, which can then scan if they have any descendants left. Um, together with, um, with process descriptors, uh, you have a completely race free way to reliably track a process or even multiple processes. Uh, yeah. That was process descriptors would avoid races. Yep. Uh, that and as long as uh, so you can just spawn a process and potentially even do it across. You can do crazy things with it if you really want to, but uh, right That's now it's. That. What? I don't doubt that. Yeah. Cool. Well, we can continue that conversation as appropriate. Anyway, um, anything else at this time? David, looking at you. Take it on. Just a reminder for me to people to go and test the um, nascent OCI docs um, so I can... <laughs> Do as much improvements as possible and hope you line it up for 14.1. Uh, yeah, so is that this document? I will drop it in the yep. chat. Yep. Everyone, yes. Good reminder. Dave's been yep. working hard on that. Look for skunk vets. Uh, uh, do you have a... What's your preferred uh, communication channel for feedback on those notes? Um, you can write feedback into the docs, Shh, don't tell anyone, but if you sign up with GitHub, you can leave it there. But the easiest way is just to badger me an IRC. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll, take, I'll take feedback anywhere it's given. But if you, if you, if you, if you write in the doc, I'll, I'll see it eventually. But if you badger me an IRC, I'll respond almost immediately in the usual timeframes. Sure, but we should have compatible time zones. Yeah, we overlap <laughs> generally in time zones, yeah. Sehr gut. Fantastisch. Okay, gang. Call it good. See you tomorrow, perhaps. Thank you very much for having us. Hey. Yeah. Thanks for having us. 48 and Pacific. Take care. Like, like and subscribe. And... Yeah, beat me to it. <laughs> <laughs>